Hello, I'm Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority and today we're going to be reviewing the Geely Air 11.6 and the Geely Adventure 12. So we're going to show you some of the comparisons between these boards, which one you should choose for you and basically go through pros and cons. Who is the Geely Adventure 12 for? Now, like the Geely 11.6, it's for taller slash bigger folks. But the differences between the 11.6 and the Geely Adventure 12 is that the Adventure 12 is a better board for touring instances. So it's a better board to go for longer distance and further as compared to a more recreational board like the 11.6. It also has a good amount of accessories that allows you to do that, including the front bungee webbing, rear bungee webbing, some action mounts to add accessories, as well as rack mount holders. Yeah, my overall impressions of this board is that it's a nice paddle. I do like the glide on this board. It's actually a really nice glide. So for those who do want to use this as like a camping sup or like something travel a bit longer distances, but you don't want to spend, you know, $1,300, $1,500 on a board, this is actually a pretty good pick. It won't go as fast as a touring board, but it's a nice little hybrid and its shape does allow it to glide nicely, both against and with the tide in this case. Uh, tracking is well, kind of what I suspected, about eight strokes a side. Um, just about one more in the Geely Air 11.6. Maneuverability was where the biggest difference was though with this board. I found that you had to do more side paddles, like two or three more side paddles versus the Air 11.6 and you had to do about a full to about a half reverse sweep stroke to complete the 360 more than the, uh, the Air 11.6. So do I recommend this board? Yeah, I do. Jilly Air, or sorry, the Jilly Adventure 12. It's a really good board. Like, I'm about six foot one, and I feel pretty good on this board. It feels pretty stable, which is nice. It's not too much. You can feel a bit of the bounce, but it's not as much as the Jilly Air, and that's because this is made of a dual layer fusion material. So, yeah, overall, great for taller people, um, people who want to. Go a little bit longer distances, multi-day camping excursions, people who want to basically bring um, gear with the deck bungees. There's also some mounts here. There's like a Scotty mount, action mount, action mount. Yeah, overall solid board. So this is the Jilly Adventure 12. Now it has a length of 12 feet. Much like the 11.6, it has a width of 32 inches and it is about six inches thick. Although we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison. You'll see that this board is actually a little bit thicker due to its materials. So the board weighs 23 pounds and it has a maximum capacity of 330 pounds, which means you could put a little more weight on this board, which is good for multi-day touring, I believe that two adults sitting can use this board as well. And this is due to its dual layer fusion technology, which is, I believe, some of the best in the ISUP industry. This gives the board a lot more rigidity, less flex, which means that it could hold more weight, such as a 330 pounds. Although it might be able to hold a little bit more, but that's after about that that's when the underwater performance starts to get a bit affected who is the agili 11.6 for so the agili 11.6 is for bigger slash taller recreational paddlers um, it's also a very lightweight board which is good for people who don't want to lug around a very heavy board especially useful for the shore it's for paddlers who want some add-on accessories as well um, I mean, this has bungee deck webbing, it's got action mount, it's got multiple handles. 
So it really has a lot of different add-on capabilities, which can really help. Okay, so what are my final impressions of the Jilly Air 11.6? I personally like it. I think it's a great starter board. Um, there's not, it's not, uh, it's not, I guess, um, rickety. It's a terrible word to use, but anyway, that's the best I can come up with right now. In other words, it's very stable, um, especially for those starting out. Uh, those that might be a little more balanced, challenged, do recommend the 11.6 Air. The board blends tracking and maneuverability pretty good, which is something I appreciate. I think a lot of that is because of the board's lighter weight compared to some other heavier inflatable boards out there, like Amazon boards, etc. I also do like a lot of the onboard things that a budget board like this still includes like it has the action mount in the front which I think is one of the best place to have for an action mount it's a good place to show either the front of the board or the rear as you're paddling it's got action mounts here and here as well it's got a good amount of bungee deck storage which I also really appreciate it's a good amount to hold my water bottle sandals there's also rear bungee deck storage near the back of the kick pod. It has a kayak seat conversion kit capability with four D rings, which is pretty cool. And it also has a little holder for the paddle. So overall, yeah, I if you're if you're a beginner, you wanna start on this board. I think it's a pretty good board. Um, if you're a bit of a smaller paddler, I'd recommend the 10.6, as this board might be a little bit bulky for you to paddle per se. But if you're someone about my height, so like six foot, six foot one, 180 pounds, this, is, this feels pretty good. So obviously there's a bit of bounce to it. Now we'll go over the Jilly Air 11.6 specs. The specifications are the board is 11 feet 6 inches long, 32 inches wide, and it's 6 inches thick. Now the board weighs 21 pounds and has a maximum capacity of 295 pounds. Now with that maximum capacity, I think you could put a dog, small child at the front, but I would not use this per se as a tandem board because it is a single layer PVC, which means that the thickness is not as, uh, it's not as thick as compared to fusion construction boards. Like for example, the Adventure 12, but we'll get more into that in the comparisons. So what are some of the cosmetic differences between the Jilly Air 11.6 and the Jilly Adventure 12? Well, if you even just look at their shape, let's start off with the tail. You can see that the Jilly Air 11.6 has a rounded tail. It also seems to have a bit of a thicker outline. Despite both boards being 32 inches width, the Jilly Air 11.6 kind of rounds out a little bit more compared to the Jilly Adventure 12. <laughs> So another difference is you can see the Scotty mounts here that the Adventure 12 has. You can put fishing racks on it, uh, fishing rod holders, etc. So another difference you can see is actually the paddle. So the Jilly Air 11.6 comes with an aluminum paddle. As you can see right here. Well, the Jilly Adventure 12 comes with a carbon fiberglass paddle. So you can see that the carbon fiberglass, or sorry, the fiberglass paddle is a lot more well made. You can also see the thickness. See that the Adventure 12 is a little bit thicker compared to the Jilly Air 11.6. Some of the differences between the Jilly Adventure 11.6 and the Jilly Adventure 12 from an on-water perspective is that I found the Jilly Adventure 11.6 was a little more stable in the water. 
I also felt that it was a little more of a maneuverable board and that's because of its slightly shorter length. The Jilly Adventure 12 was a better board for tracking. It was also a little bit faster in the water. You could see even due to their shapes. But overall, the Jilly Adventure 12 was still pretty stable, um, especially compared to many inflatable touring boards that are out there. I found the Jilly 11.6 was a good board for stability, um, especially for beginners that just want to start standing on the board. So now this is the tail to nose specs of the Jilly Adventure 12 and the Jilly Adventure 11.6. So starting at the tail, you can see that this one is a little more smaller and squared off. Adventure 12 of the 11.6 is more rounded, a bit bigger. Get up to the rear deck pad. You can see that the 11.6 does not have the kick pad. Well, Adventure 12 does. You can see it's a little bit thicker there. That helps with pivot turns. Now, the rear bungee is about the same. You can see, again, there's the Scotty mounts. So go up the deck here. Handles out about the same placement. You can see there's the kayak hybrid uh, D-rings. And there's deck webbing. So you can see because the Julie Air 11.6 is a little bit wider at the nose, its deck webbing area is a little bit larger. And then you come to the nose, you can tell that nose is a little bit thicker, Julie Air 11.6 compared to the Julie Adventure 12. And it's also a little bit shorter. Now you can see we have the tail of the bottoms of both Julie boards. Go up, pretty similar design for both. So you can see you have the Save the Turtles for the Jilly 11.6, and then you have a different little picture over here. Each portion of the proceeds goes towards ocean cleanup by various different ocean charities, like Save the Turtles, for example. So go up the boards. Again, you can see the shape of the Jilly Air 11.6 is a bit wider. And it's a little bit shorter too. Now we'll go over the accessories of the Jilly Air 12 and the Jilly Air 11.6. So you can see both are very similar packages. They come with the bag, that center touring fin and two side fins, leash, and the single chamber pump. Now the only difference is between the two is the paddle. Paddle of the Jilly Air 11.6 is aluminum. While the paddle of the Jilly Adventure 12 is fiberglass. So we'll go over that in a second. So now these are, we'll go over the main differences of the two paddles here. So this is the fiberglass paddle. As you can see, it's a nylon blade, weighs about 2.4 pounds. You can also see there's a little locking mechanism, which I find actually helps the paddle keep stable throughout. And the adjustment goes from 67 inches to 84 inches. So adjust it just like that. There's the little measurements there. Put your hand about there. This is the pile that comes with the Jilly Air 11.6. Now it has a nylon blade, has an aluminum shaft, and it weighs the same weight as 2.4 pounds. So you can see you can adjust just by flipping this up. And then there's notches over here. So this one goes from 64 inches to 87. So this is about a good height for me. These are the fins that come with the Jilly Air 11.6 Adventure 12 paddles, paddle boards. So 
these are a sort of a proprietary fin system so they hook in and then they snap so i'll give you an example here with the center fin you want to open that lever like that slide it in push it forward so you can see it kind of hooks right in like that and you just press this guy down then you have the fin in there solidly this is the pump that comes with the Jilly paddleboard. So both the 11.6 and the Adventure 12 come with this exact same pump. So this is a dual action single chamber pump, which means that if you put this little screw in, it's dual action. But if you take it out, it's single action. So how you'd want to work this pump is that Within the first five PSI, you want dual action. And then as soon as it starts getting a bit harder to pump, then you switch to single action, you take the screw out. This pump can pump up to 28 PSI. Although with the Adventure 12 and the 11.6, you only need about like 12 to 15 PSI, depending on the board. This is the backpack for the Jilly Adventure 12. As you can see, it's color coded, color coded to the blue. The Jilly Air 11.6 bag is pretty much the exact same thing, except it's green. So this bag is 30, 36 inches by 16 inches by 12 inches, and it weighs four pounds bag only. One of the things I do like about this Jilly bag is it's got a number of useful pockets. So this bottom pocket here can be used for a lot of different add-on accessories. Like let's just, just say you have like a rod holder mount or a GoPro mount. And you have this pocket here for bigger things. Pretty decent size for an ISOP bag, which is nice. And then what I really like is this fin pocket labeling right here. It's good for a subconscious level because a lot of times you have the fins and you just throw them into the a bigger pocket. But with this, it's clearly labeled and let's just say you're going and you forgot your fins. Well, if you're packing the, the bag away, you see fin pocket, subconscious level. Oh, there's the fins. So you, you go and grab them, right? Not to say that that's happened to me, but something that could happen. And then this is inside of the bag which is wide and spacious i find it is good for even a less than perfect fold which is pretty nice so this is the back of the bag now another reason why i like the chili bag is because it has a good amount of padding on the shoulder shops which is actually really good some of the better padding compared to others in the ice up injuries industry so Especially when you're throwing the bag over your shoulder. Some of them don't have enough padding and then it just digs right into your shoulder, especially even on hikes. But this one is more than enough and it feels, for the most part, pretty comfortable for at least short to medium walks to the shore anyway. So you can see padding on the back here, which is ample. Also have the waist straps. So you can see there's some padding on the waist straps, which is a good little feature. And then there's also a little name label in case you are um, traveling, just want your name on it. And then finally, there's a little zippered pocket here. And then there's also a little mesh pocket for miscellaneous things such as water bottles, etc. Last but not least, here's the repair kit. So you see here's the valve wrench some glue and then you can kind of see it there some patches there's a black patch blue patch and a gray patch which matches the colors of this board pretty nice i do like that they include glue some isop manufacturers don't which i think is a real shame but jilly does so good for them for doing that so now I'll talk about some of the accessories add-on accessories that you can get with the jilly air so most obvious one that I have my camera pointed towards is the Jilly electric pump. I personally highly recommend you get an electric pump. Um, it just makes everything so much easier. 
especially if you go paddleboarding quite a bit. Not only does it save a bit of time because you can set up the board while the pump is doing the work for you, but it's also easier on your back if you have um, injuries, issues, etc. Electric pump is the way to go. So especially if you're planning to go um, paddling at least you know once a week, something like that, highly recommend. So some other add-on accessories you can do is you can see here you've got rack mounts here, so you can put a fishing rack on this board. These Scotty mounts can also be used for rod holders, as well as a few other things. Anything that basically Scotty mount the company that has those uh, has that design mount can do. So you can go from ScottyMountCompany.com and see what they have as well. If you want more than just what Jilly offers. Finally, the action mounts. You can put rod holders in there. You can put all kinds of different stuff. Uh, for example, cup holders. Yeah. So then finally, of course, you have the action mount at the front. That's for a good uh, GoPro camera, all that kind of stuff. So what are the things that I like and dislike about the Jilly Adventure 12? So some of the things I really liked, the fact that for its shape, it's actually a very stable board. It tracks very well in the water, thanks to its 12 inch length. It also has a lot of add-on accessories that you can add on. I really like the way they've designed it, in terms of like the deck padding here, the bungees. They have action mounts, which is also very handy. I do also really like this kick pad. I also like that the board is very lightweight. So it's pretty easy to carry for a 12 foot board, pretty good. And it can be for a bunch of paddlers with a bunch of different skill sets. So from beginner to intermediate, people who maybe have had an all around recreational board or want a little bit more of a touring preference, it's a great board to have. What are my likes and dislikes for the Jilly Air 11.6? Now, for me, there's a lot to like. First off, it has a really good price to value ratio. Um, some of the best knives up industry, actually. I also thought that it was, the board is very stable, which is really good for beginners. Um, that if this is their first board, it's perfect. I also like the amount of add-on accessories that you can add to it. Usually boards of this price point, you don't really get that option. So it's also a really good benefit, like you have kayak seat um, D-rings, you have the action mounts, you have a lot of bungee deck webbing, which is good, especially for storing things like dry bags, etc. It's also a good amount of um, deck pad, which you can sit a kid in the front, etc. It also has a fairly decent warranty policy. So the Jilly Airs from 2023 have a two-year warranty on them. And now we're gonna go through warranty and return policy of these two boards. Both these boards come with a two year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Now the warranty is against manufacturing defects. It's not against misuse, damage from external elements, uh, improper use like, for example, the board being overinflated or the board bursting when it has too much PSI in their sun. Just all kinds of instances like that. And something to note about the 60 day warranty, or sorry, 60 day money back guarantee is that you have to pay the shipping for the board to come back. And you also have to pay a 20% restocking fee. So keep that in mind whenever you're shopping. So do I recommend the Jilly Air 11.6 and a Jilly Adventure 12? Yes, absolutely but for different reasons. So just to quickly summarize, Jilly Adventure 11.6, I'd recommend, which is the one on the right, by the way, green bag, I'd recommend for beginner paddlers, people who want a pretty stable board to learn on and something that's very lightweight. So the Jilly Adventure 12, bag on the left, it's blue. I'd recommend for 
paddling longer distances, um, loading more gear or even people on there, and just really traveling further. People who want something a little bit better than a recreational board, just uh, paddle around and go a little bit further, especially board that tracks well with speed. So thank you for watching my review. This is Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority. If you like this comp, if you like this content, like and subscribe. Till then, see you for the next reviews. See ya.